the effects really are felt decades, if not centuries, into the future. So it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Not so easy for China, the number one carbon dioxide producer in the world. Beijing issued its first ever red alert for air pollution on Tuesday, shutting down much of the city. The air quality index was 10 times higher than the World Health Organization's recommended levels and classified as very unhealthy. But here in the U.S., the dangers of climate change are not as obvious. There are very subtle effects. You can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't see carbon dioxide. But experts say the benefits of reducing carbon dioxide would be felt almost immediately. Driscoll says decreasing greenhouse gas emissions would decrease air pollution, lessen the intensity and frequency of extreme weather events, increase crop production, and decrease illnesses and even deaths. There would be reduced hospital visits, um, and so there would be tremendous health benefits, and those benefits would be realized in all the lower 48 states. But the United States is certainly not blameless in the climate change crisis. The U.S. is just second behind China in carbon dioxide emissions, the two countries together making up 42 percent of carbon emissions worldwide. And sustainability experts say the two powers are essential in reaching an agreement at the U.N. Climate Change Summit in Paris this week. The relationship between and the commitments between the U.S. and and China leading up to this uh, conference are absolutely significant. Uh, to have a the major developed country and a developing country work together, it's a very significant departure from the past. So why should we care what other countries are doing? Well, Driscoll says pollutants released from burning coal in China or anywhere in the world could easily end up deposited here in the U.S. The stakes are high now, higher, and they're getting higher all the time. So the pressure is on to do something. Negotiators in Paris released a preliminary international agreement on Saturday and an updated draft today. However, many disagreements still need to be sorted out, including India's push for developed countries like the U.S. to shoulder more of the burden. The summit ends Friday, but it's possible the talks could spill over into the weekend. There seems to be a lot of interest and a lot of momentum. Hopefully the time is right. We will, we will see. In Syracuse, I'm Danielle Gaiman, NCC News.